Hi, today we are going to talk about the challenges in deploying industrial data acquisition gateways and how this solution can help factory IT personnel to deploy such gateways with ease. I am Dr. Rizwan, Senior IoT Consultant with AWS Professional Services. Let's get started. In a typical factory setup, we have multiple restricted VLANs. Each restricted VLAN contains multiple equipment like robotic arm, CNC machines, PLCs, etc. These restricted VLANs, also known as isolated equipment groups, are separated from each other for security. Thus, equipment in one VLAN cannot influence equipment in another VLAN. If we want to read data from an equipment, then we need to deploy an industrial data acquisition gateway in the respective VLAN. These data acquisition gateways require one knowing how to work with Linux and install it on industrial PCs, also known as IPCs for short, and then hardening it according to corporate security policies. Then learn to install industrial data acquisition software, which in this case means uh, knowing installing IoT Greencross and IoT Sitewise. Thus, it is difficult for factory IT personnel to deploy and manage such gateways at scale. This solution aims to simplify this and allow factory IT personnel to trigger and build unique bootable OS images. Then they can download this image and flash a thumb drive. They can boot with this bootable OS image in the thumb drive and it will automatically take care of all the steps which include the OS installation to the industrial PC with the correct network configuration, harden it according to the corporate security policies, install AWS IoT Greengrass on all necessary components. Upon completion of all the steps, we have successfully deployed an AWS IoT Sitewise Gateway in the respective VLAN. This sample solution is developed using AWS Cloud Development Kit version 2 also known as CDK v2 and comprises of two stacks. You can find this solution on GitHub under AWS samples. Link to the repository is in the video description. Alternatively, you can also scan the QR code. Then I'll briefly go through the working of the solution so that we have a general idea of how the solution works and then show a small demo. As mentioned before, the factory IT personnel starts the image bridge processing by making a call to an API gateway endpoint while providing all the needed information like name of the gateway, network configuration, etc. Then the image build lambda will check the request and create a secure break glass username and password and store it in the secrets manager. Once all of this is done, the, it will trigger a code build to build an OS image based on all of the input parameter and return the response back to the user with the code build project ID and the S3 bucket location where the image will be delivered once it is built. In this solution, the code build project downloads Ubuntu 22.04 LTS image from canonical repositories, configures the image and packages all the necessary scripts and information into the image. Once the image build is complete, it stores it in an S3 bucket and completion notification is also generated. Then this image can be downloaded and flashed onto a thumb drive. This bootable thumb drive can be used to boot the IPC and the unattended OS installation will start automatically and will install a fresh copy of Ubuntu 22.04 LTS on the IPC along with all the necessary scripts and information. Then the IBC will reboot and continue with the installation and configuration. Finally, it will install the SSM agent, which will come online. The SSM automation will continue the installation process by triggering a custom provisioning SSM document. This will install CloudWatch agent, install software for TPM, and provision the TPM. Generate a key pair in the TPM, and then generate a CSR to get an IoT certificate then store the return certificate into the TPM and continue provisioning by creating a thing role and finally creates a green grass installer that is downloaded and installed. Finally, sitewise components are deployed and a sitewise gateway is provisioned. 
All of this is transparent to the end user. After all of these steps, we essentially get an IPC with SSM agent, CloudWatch agent, Greengrass v2, and Sitewise Gateway installed. Now let's look at the GitHub project itself. The repository contains both the solution and its documentation. Do read the documentation, including the disclaimer, to understand what is implemented and what additional steps would be needed to bring this code into production. To install this project into a testing account, please follow the installation guide. Prerequisites include make Python 3.8 or higher, pip3 package manager, virtual environment Python package, Node.js for CDK, and obviously CDK itself. Please make sure that you, your AWS credentials are configured properly for the target account. You can test this by using AWS STS get caller identity as shown below. Once we have verified that the credentials are set up properly, we will export the following variables using the following commands. However, if you want to deploy in a region other than EU West 1, then replace the region name accordingly. Finally, to build the project, simply run make build from the terminal. And to deploy it, call make deploy. The building and deployment tests are enclosed in the make file itself. Have a look at it if you want to study or modify it. Now let us look at the usage of the solution. When a 5.3 IT personnel want to build an image, they will need to pass on certain necessary information to start the image build process. Mandatory part of the request JSON object is the instance name and the network configuration. The instance name must follow the shown regex pattern. Now let us talk about the network configuration. If the expected gateway requires only one network port that will be used both for IT and OT, then we could use a configuration as shown below. If the network does not use DHCP, we could use the following network configuration. If the expected gateway requires two separate network ports, one for IT and one for OT, then we could use the following configuration. That being said, factories have firewalls, which means not all traffic is allowed. Thus, the following combinations of source port, destination port, protocols, IPs, and TCP session state must be allowed for outbound traffic, and the next set should be allowed for inbound traffic. In case a higher level appliance or firewall is used, which allows for specified endpoints to be added to an allow list, then following endpoints must be added to the allow list. A key point about these endpoints is that Amazon Trust Certificate must be trusted, which can be found here. These endpoints are configured correctly within the IPC, and the trust certificates are automatically installed, but this cannot be done automatically for the factory network and firewall, and thus factory network and firewall must be configured prior to the provisioning of each data gateway. The built image can be found in the S3 bucket, and the location where the image will be stored is returned as part of the image generation request. Hardware requirement for the industrial PC is that it should be an x64 architecture that is compatible with Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, having at least a 1 GHz dual-core CPU, a 2 GHz quad-core CPU is recommended though, and with 8 GB of RAM or more, and 256 GB of disk space or more. Additionally, we need TPM2 for security, as well as one USB port for flashing the image. If you are planning to use this in a VM, then you would need VirtualBox 7.0 or higher. The VM settings are shown. If you're using another VM software, then you will need to adopt these settings accordingly, and even then, your mileage may vary. Once we have all the prerequisites, we can actually use the solution. To try it out, we can copy the request object, have it over the testing AWS account. Here you can see that I have already deployed the stacks. Now we can navigate to Lambda Service Console, and then find the Start Image Build Lambda function.
head over to the test tab and here we can create the test by pasting the request. I already have configured the test and now I can invoke the Lambda using the test button. We can inspect the result of the execution by expanding the execution details. We can see the response of the Lambda function which includes the core build project ID as well as the S3 location where we will find the OS image once the image build is complete. We can head over to the code build console to see the building of the project itself. As you can see, the project is currently in progress, building the image. It's skipping to when the image build is complete. Now we can navigate to the F3 console and file the image build bucket. The image will be stored in a prefix as the instance name and request ID. And here is the built image. This is actually a zip file. We can download this image. Skipping to when the download of the image is complete. We can now open the zip file and find a folder called images under which we can find the Ubuntu auto installer. We can load this into our VM to test it out. As you can see, our VM is already configured and we are just going to add the disk. Let us explore and verify the settings as well. Once we are ready, we can launch the VM. Is speeding up the installation process? The first phase is to install the OS and all relevant information onto the disk of the VM. Upon completion of the first step, it will reboot and continue with the installation. It will execute various steps during the process including network configuration and verification, OS hardening, etc. And finally, it will install and register SSM agent using hybrid activation. The SSM agent is now installed and online. Now the provisioning continues in the background using the SSM automation. After some time, we can head over to Sitewise console and see that the gateway is provisioned and available. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching.